I'm Chris Shattuck, and this is how to work with the database API. In this video, we're going to write several queries, and we're going to create and update tables with .install files. If you come from a background where you've queried the database directly using PHP native functions like MySQL query or Postgres query, then the Drupal database API might seem a little strange at first. The goal of the API is to allow the developer to write one query that will work across multiple types of databases. So instead of having to keep in mind the nuances of writing SQL queries for MySQL and Postgres and maybe CouchDB or MongoDB, instead you write one query and then a plugin is written to translate that query into a PHP native style and all you need to do is write the query in the initial language, which is the database abstraction layer. When working with the abstraction layer, there are two types of queries, static queries and dynamic queries. The static queries will look actually pretty similar if you're used to querying the database directly through PHP native functions. There are just some minor nuances to keep in mind when you're using them. Dynamic queries, on the other hand, look a lot different. And the idea behind them is that you can build up a query step by step and based on different conditions in the function that you might be working in at the time, you can change the query to manipulate it in multiple ways. So for example, if you know the user ID of the user that you want to add as a filter for a query, you can add that in, but then if you don't know it, you can leave it out. Before the query is run, it's structured as an object and it contains several methods to do things like add filters and fields to the query. It also contains metadata about the query, and you can add tags to do things like tell other modules that they can modify the query before it runs. In this video, we're going to talk about how to construct queries, both dynamic and static versions, and we'll also talk about how to set up your module.install file so that when the module is installed, it sets up all of the database tables that your module will need. In order to demonstrate these concepts, what we're going to do is recreate a module that we built in a previous video that tracks user history. What it does is store user history data inside of a variable inside of the database using variable get and variable set and displays this history as a list of clickable links in a block which we enabled in our sidebar. So the idea here is that as the user goes through the site they have a history of all of the pages that they've recently visited which they can click to jump back to them. So it works similar to history in a browser. Because we're using variable get and variable set we were limited in what we could do. So what we're going to do in this video is take that same concept and we're going to create a dedicated database table for the history and then extend the functionality to be able to track users by session and by user ID as well.